What up though? D. Carrie here. So little things to know while you're abroad. Know that, know your rates and fees for the different cards you're going to use. I, I'm an Amex customer, so I use my Amex at every possible chance I can overseas because there are no foreign transaction fees. Um, when I need cash in a different um, currency, I don't go to an exchange rate. I prefer one, checking to see if they will take dollars. Some places will take dollars, but you gotta look at the rate. Sometimes it'll be a one-to-one -one and that's uh, a loss to you or it can be a benefit to you. Like in Bermuda, it's pretty much the same. So you can you can buy, you can use dollars and not necessarily uh, lose out as much. However, in St. Martin, you can use dollars, but it didn't really benefit you because the dollar was worth more than, I forgot what their currency is, but it was, um, the dollar was, was worth a little more, I think. So it, you ended up spending more when you spent dollars. Um, you, I prefer to just go to an ATM and withdraw money. This way I'm only paying my bank's convert. I, I know what my bank's fees are and that's it. You pay your foreign ATM fee and the conversion rate, that's it. As opposed to going, I mean, you could always just do cash. I did that once and something about just using the ATM made me feel a lot better. Um, also, um, consider your cell service. Some places are, I have AT&T, so I can only speak on AT&T. With them, there's like a $10 option uh, where I wanna say there's like over 100 countries that are included in a $10 a day, use your phone the same that you use at home. So data, Wi-Fi, either or, I'm only paying $10 and I can use my phone as much data, as much Wi-Fi, as much talk, because I have unlimited talk, text, and all that stuff at home. So I have those same benefits in these 100 cities. So for me, I love AT&T for that little simple feature, $10 a day, and if not, they offer a uh, passport where you can spend, I wanna say 40, 60, 120 or something like that for different packages. So contact your carrier, see what options they have because the last thing you wanna do is get to the airport, realize you have to call a taxi or you need to call your hotel or you wanna call home and let them know that you're back home and remember that you don't have foreign data because when I tell you those charges can be a bit exuberant, sis, bruh, trust me know it beforehand um always have a pen or a card for the hotel that you're staying at because god forbid your phone dies while you're out and you can't charge your phone on the go you want to be able to tell a taxi driver where it is that you need to be dropped off if language is a problem i was in barcelona my battery died i was at like a street festival so there was nowhere for me to charge my phone my portable charger was dead and i needed to be able to tell the driver where it was i was staying before the battery finally gave out on me, I wrote down the address of the hotel I was staying at so that I could give him the napkin. He had the address and he knew where to go. Thankfully, he had a port where I could charge my phone because I ended up needing my translator app for me to understand that he was asking if I was willing to pay tolls. But we at least got that far because I had the address for the hotel I was staying at written down. So. I suggest always having a pen so that if you need to write something down or if you need to get information out of your phone, you're able to have it if you can't access your cell phone. Consider having multiple adapters or converters with you when you travel. If you have a smartwatch, if you have a portable charger, if you have um, a cell phone, the last thing you wanna have to do is wait for your phone to stop to finish charging before you can charge your watch. So um, that came in handy while I was away in Barcelona. I, well no, that's when I realized you wanna have two because I had to wait for my phone to finish charging before I can charge my watch or my, charge, my portable charger because I only had the one converter. So if I'd had two at the time, I wouldn't have to like set an alarm to wake up in the middle of the night to check to see if my phone was charged so that I can then charge my watch so that everything would be charged and ready to go for the next day. Little things like that. Spend the extra $10 and get an extra converter. Another thing to remember, ladies or fellas, if it's your thing, is the size of the purse that you're gonna carry. I prefer crossbodies because I like having my hands free or backpacks. 
Um, I ended up bringing a small crossbody with me to Costa Rica, but then when I ended up doing one of the excursions, I knew that I would need my flip-flops with me, I knew I'd need my uh, bathing suit with me, and I'd need something to put that in afterwards. So thankfully we went to pick up, and the crossbody, what I'm saying is the crossbody, the only bag that I had other than my backpack was too small to hold the stuff that I needed to bring with me on the excursion. Without having to walk around with a plastic bag, I ended up buying a knapsack, like a cute little backpack purse, so that I could travel with the things that I needed without having to, you know, have multiple bags. So consider if you're gonna go on excursions or if you're gonna go out, are you gonna need to have an umbrella with you? Are you gonna need to have a jacket or um, a sweater that you can't tie around your waist per se? So you want to know, you want to have a bag that you can put that in if it's going to matter to you. So one of them tiny little purses or something is going to pop off when you got to put an umbrella or some flip flops in it. So I suggest possibly bringing two bags that you can fold up. Um, I had ended up buying a really cute knapsack from Costa Rica and um, that worked perfectly for me so that I could put those extra things in there and still have my hands free and feel like my items were secure in the bag. Always have a pair of leggings. I found that in a clutch, sometimes that works for just running from the room to go pick up breakfast or to go sit and have breakfast. I don't wanna wear a full outfit if I know I'm just gonna hang out in the room for a few more hours. Um, and also, sometimes it's actually cold at the tropical destination that you're going to in your room. If you can't adjust the uh, thermostat, the last thing you wanna do is go to bed freezing cold, yeah? leggings. Best friend put me on. I never leave home traveling without them now. Kiosk and mobile check-in are your friend. If you know you're going to be pushing it when it comes to how heavy your bag is or um, if you're going to have like a third bag if you will for a carry-on that you know you technically shouldn't have. For me I put my neck pillow in another bag because I'm not one of those people that likes my neck pillow to just hang off of the suitcase because I don't want other stuff touching the pillow that I'm gonna put on my face. That's just the way I live my life. So I keep it in a bag. That bag also sometimes will hold a pair of flip flops or um, maybe like some chips or some food or something that I just threw in there and wasn't gonna fit in my knapsack. So sometimes if you catch that one agent that's actually doing their job that day, they'll tell you that's a third bag. One of them has to be checked or when you're at the actual ticketing desk where there are agents, they, they'll have you weigh your bag. So that's when you get caught out there. I ended up having to check a bag um, on my way back from Thailand because it was too heavy. Then she saw that I had the backpack on and then she saw that the third bag, so it was a mess. If I'd been able to go to a kiosk to check in, and I understand in some places that's not an option, but if it is an option, Always use it to your disposal so that you don't get caught up in that having to check a bag or having to take stuff out and put it in another bag life. Because if they start weighing your shit and you over, last thing you wanna do is pay those extra fees. The heavier things should go in your backpack because those are that's the bag that they're not going to weigh if they don't really have to. Um, so in a nutshell, that's pretty much it. In the comments below, feel free to drop any extra traveling comments or um, tips. Uh, questions you may have, different hacks and things that you use when it comes to booking your trips. Um, thanks for watching it thus far. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, all that jazz, and I'll see you at my next upload. Laters.